How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. Part 2. With the engine on the bench using compressed air, this helps with the running in process, but it soon shows up some common problems. Lubrication is all important on any kind of an engine, especially a steam engine like this one. The oil has to go a long way from the inlet of the high pressure cylinder to the outlet of the low pressure cylinder. And for that reason, I've made sure that I've pumped plenty of lubricating oil into the engine. When I rotate the engine so that the compressed air is being admitted to the lower half of the high pressure cylinder, this is what happens. The piston rod gland leaks very badly. Packing glands is quite an easy job, providing it's not a triple expansion engine, and providing you can get at the parts and your fingers are not too big for the job. Taking off this gland cover took a while, and what did I find inside? This stuff, whatever it may be. I scraped out the gland using a piece of MIG welding wire so I could get right to the bottom of it, and now it is empty. Steam engine glands are normally packed with graphited yarn. This is an old piece of proper graphited yarn. The new stuff is not very good at all. So why did they change it? Well, I think the old type graphited yarn had asbestos in it. The new stuff doesn't, but it falls apart. This is the total amount of graphited yarn I extracted from the gland. As you can see, it's not even been wrapped around the piston rod. These days, I use this stuff. It's Teflon coated yarn, woven into a 316 square piece. And for certain applications in larger model steam engines, you can use it as you buy it if it will fit into the gland, but this engine is too small. So what I tend to do is unpick this stuff and I end up with quite a lot of strands of Teflon coated yarn for most engines round about the size of this one. If I use longer lengths, I can wind it around the piston rod on a larger engine and it still works. But you can't just stuff random pieces of yarn into the gland. It needs to be carefully wound around the piston rod or the valve rod or whatever you're packing. I can't really film this process because my hand was in the way for most of it. Here you get the idea. You push the end into the gland itself and then using a small pointed screwdriver, just keep wrapping the yarn around the piston rod. And once you've done that, slide it all neatly into the cavity and refit the cover. Do not over tighten glands because if you do that, there will be a severe friction problem, and also it can score the piston rod. Just nip up the gland nuts, it's enough to hold the gland in place. If it works loose, it's not tight enough, so when you next fit a nut to the gland, tighten it a little bit more. A lot of the fixings on this engine are 7BA, and I've already come across quite a few of them where the threads are stripped. The nuts that were holding the plates on top of the main bearings were so tight they were almost at shear point. You need to use a model steam engine head for this job. I've already noticed quite a few problems with the engine. This is a bit of a problem. There is insufficient clearance between the valve fork and the expansion link. This can be fixed using a square needle file, but I will have to dismantle quite a lot of the engine to do the job and every one of the six valve forks seems to have this problem. And as you can see here, the cylinder drain cocks are all over the place. I turned up the air pressure and off it went. Apart from the drain cock not sealing properly, the gland nut is not tight enough because oil is running out of it. I tightened the gland cover slightly and another run should tell me whether it's okay. You may have noticed in the previous clip when the engine was running that when I lifted it off the bench it became a lot quieter. That's because my bench acts as a soundboard. It's a very useful function. Just in case you're wondering, there's nothing wrong with the audio. I stop speaking when the engine's running.
I needed to tighten one of the nuts on the gland cover that's quite inaccessible with the spanner, and although I don't like doing it, I use my very thin, long-nosed pair of pliers to tighten it a bit. I can get at the nut on the right-hand side using a very small spanner, but it can only be rotated very slowly and incrementally. This wooden mounting base is not suitable for the engine. It sort of looks OK, but you can't get at the eccentrics properly, and besides, it's warped. Even when it's sat flat on the bench, it rocks about. And as I showed in the previous episode, the screws were unevenly tightened, which warped the cast iron bed and also warped the baseboard. The gland on the low pressure cylinder is also leaking. As you can see, it's full of black oil. Not unsurprisingly, the eccentrics failed, because securing them to the crankshaft using one 7BA slot head grub screw was never going to end well. There's nothing for it. I need to remove the engine from the badly warped piece of wood it's screwed onto. And once I removed the last brass bolt, I could lift the engine off the piece of wood. But before I did that, I thought it would be a good idea to remove the handle from the reversing lever because if I inadvertently lay the engine on this side, it would bend, or even worse, break off the handle. Now the handle is securely in a safe place. By the look of this base, despite it being covered in oil and bits of debris, at one time it was probably alright, but now it isn't alright because it's warped. What I'm doing here is having a tightness check. Don't forget, the big end brasses are made from gunmetal, and if you over tighten steel bolts and plates against them, they can warp and become tight for no reason other than being over tightened. Apart from the centre big end brass, the nuts on the other two big end brasses were over tightened onto the bolts. Now I need to remove the high pressure eccentrics, and guess what? The small nuts and bolts that were holding the eccentric rod to the expansion link were massively over-tightened, very near shear point once again. The first thing I'm going to do now is remove the 7BA slot-headed grub screw. The next part of the job is to re-thread the holes in the eccentric sheaves. I'm using a high-speed steel 6BA tap to re-thread the hole, and the original 5BA hole was more or less the right tapping size for 6BA. As you can see, there are not a lot of threads in this piece of steel, so to make the job a bit stronger, I slightly ground the end of the grub screw so it was flat. More threads were then in contact with the eccentric sheave. I reconnected the eccentric rods to the expansion link and screwed the engine back down onto the base using just three of the brass bolts, not the fourth one. With a small amount of compressed air admitted to the engine, I reset the timing by ear, so now, once I turn up the pressure and rotate the flywheel, if all is well, the engine should run. And it did run much better than before. And here, if you look at the piston rod on the high pressure cylinder, it isn't leaking oil. There's a tiny bit on there, but there needs to be some coming out. But it is infinitely better than it was previously. I think I can improve the timing. So here, with a small amount of air once again entering the engine, I adjust the eccentric. I need to speak over this part. I've been adjusting the reversing lever towards reverse. I'm doing this because the die blocks are putting too much pressure on the ends of all three expansion links. This, by the way, is not the solution and not the end of the problems with this engine, but it is the end of this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Here's a bit of slow motion to finish.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.